Hey, the future of IIoT take 31. Yes, you heard that right. This is our 31st take, not. So is OPC UA the future of IIoT? To answer that question, I have to give two definitions. I'm gonna start doing this more. What is the definition of IIoT, the Industrial Internet of Things? It, basically, Industrial Internet of Things is the result of digitally transforming your business using industry 4.0 methodologies, okay? In a nutshell, the Industrial Internet of Things is getting all data, any data or information that any consumer needs in their hands when they need it. That is IIoT. Right? Just like your cell phone, you can access your entire life, you can access any piece of information you need through your cell phone. That's the Internet of Things. Okay? The industrial Internet of Things is within, within a manufacturing facility or within a manufacturing division or within a manufacturing enterprise. Any consumer of data can get access to that data when they need it. That's industrial Internet of Things. OPC UA is a standard, it's an industrial standard for packaging industrial data from the edge, okay? So the edge is all your machines, PLCs and embedded controllers and all that stuff. OPC UA is the standard for A, how you should communicate between your server and your devices in the field and how that the data should be packaged in its payload, right? So that, you know, what should the tag structure look like? What are some of the key parameters that need to be included in that payload? How frequently should you, if, you, if I'm an OPC UA driver, how often should I pull that device based on, you know, it's, it's the standard for how we should be talking to one another. OPC UA is the grandchild of OPC DA. UA is the unified architecture. Okay, so that is, it was an, OPC UA is an, is an, uh, an advancement of the original OPC DA standard, which was written by the OPC Foundation, and the OPC Foundation is made up of controls engineers. It's made up of, of people who work on PLCs. So you have manu hardware manufacturers and you have engineers and you have end users who all got together, created the OPC Foundation, and they wrote a standard for how stuff would talk to one another. So, the, our, th so those are our two definitions. But is OPC UA the future of IoT? To answer that question, I've got to make one more qualifying statement. In our opinion, an IoT protocol has three qualities to it, okay? Number one, that IoT protocol is open. It's an open protocol. What that means is, is that it plays nice with everything. Number two, it is report by exception, okay? What that means is it's edge driven and it's report by exception. The reporting node in the system is only sending updates of its data to the server that's storing all the data that the clients will then consume, okay? Number three, it is lightweight and stateful. In our opinion, those are the three things that all IIoT protocols have in common. You gotta be lightweight and stateful. That is, it can't take up a ton of bandwidth in your network, why? Because you're basically, everything in your business is gonna become smart and be on the network, and if everything takes up a ton of bandwidth, you don't have any bandwidth left, okay? In the middle, report by exception, there's no point in publishing data that hasn't changed, okay? There's no point in sending a tag update from the edge that hasn't changed. If it was a one the last time I got the update and it's still a one, then as long as I'm stateful, that is as long as I know that connection is still in place, then I can trust it's still a one. And the open component, and the open component of it is, is that you don't, there are open source pieces of software, there are open port pieces of software in the community that it will play nice with, okay? So that means no one owns the protocol. There, you don't have to be a member of a special group or a club to be able to speak that language, okay? which is true for OPC UA. OPC UA, you have to be a member of the club to be able to speak that language. What that means is you can't get the OPC UA standard for free. So if I'm a hardware manufacturer and I wanna support OPC UA, I gotta pay for the standard just so I can speak the language. Okay, so it's pay for play, okay? But that being said, is it the future of IOT? The answer is yes and no, okay? So I'm gonna use two different color markers for this. The, most of the existing architecture that we have in place in, so this is your legacy hardware in your manufacturing facilities, okay? So I've got an OPC server, and I also have three PLCs or embedded controllers in the field that all, um, uh, this one will be an Allen Bradley, an Allen Bradley Control Logix. This will be an Allen Bradley Micrologix, and this will be a Siemens Step 7. It could be anything. 
and our OPC server in this case is gonna be kept server. In my plant, I also have an Easy Rack PLC, I have a Wago PLC, and I have a Raspberry Pi 3. Okay. The blue ones are all talking to one another, poll response. So anybody who's worked with a kept server knows that I basically set up a channel device tag architect architecture. The channel is the driver. So I'm gonna end up, in this case, I'm gonna end up with three, three channels in my kept server architecture. I'm gonna have one for control logics, one for micro logics, and one for Siemens Step 7. That's the kept server driver that's able to talk the native language to those PLCs. So these are native protocols, okay? to talk to the PLCs. When I want to talk to Kepware, so I'm an OPC client, and this can be lots of things. Most of the time it's like a SCADA system. So in this case, this could be Wonderware, but it could be anything. When I talk to the OPC server, I am talking to it over OPC UA. Okay. So this is a OPC UA server, and this is an OPC UA client. The OPC UA server is talking to our hardware in the field over its native protocol, whatever that driver is, and then it's talking to all the OPC clients over one language, which is OPC UA, right? So that's that piece. This, this is the legacy architecture. When we digitally transform a business, okay, when we're gonna go ahead, let's say this, this architecture is already in place, and we're gonna go ahead and digitally transform the business, and what we want to do is we want to now integrate this stuff over here and we want to integrate the existing MES system and the existing ERP system and we want to integrate the existing warehouse management system, the WMS, the ERP and the MES. What the OPC UA people will tell you is that you can integrate MES, ERP and WMS with the existing OPC infrastructure, the OPC UA infrastructure. Okay. And in some cases, that's true. There are some MES systems out there that talk OPC UA. And there are some MES systems or ERP systems that can talk to OPC UA. I actually don't know of any, but there, there are. And there are warehouse management systems that can talk OPC UA. Now, Kepware also has other mechanisms to be able to talk to this software. But in order to make these connections, in general, the way that we're doing this is we're putting a piece of software in the middle. The way we do this is we have a piece of software in the middle that collects the data from OPC UA, and then we, maybe we use web service or whatever in the middle, and, that, and that's how we currently do it. This would generally be Factory Studio or Ignition. People bring up Iconix a lot. Iconix is a good solution. I'm gonna do a completely different video on why it is we don't use Iconix, but Iconix can, can live here in the middle. But Ignition and Factory Studio are the best. You know, another one that would work really well in here is WinCCOA would work really well in the middle. You know what won't work in here is system platform. Wonderware and Aviva have some newer open solutions that you could kind of put in the middle here, but the engineering costs on this side is cost prohibitive. Okay, Rockwell and Factory Talk, exact same thing. The idea of IIoT is being able to seamlessly get this data from all these different tools into one location so that any consumer can get their data at any time from anywhere when they need it, right? With OPC UA, making that happen with OPC UA is incredibly difficult. So we don't, as a, as a team, we don't choose OPC UA as the standard or the protocol to make all these connections. Okay, that's not what we do. What we end up doing is we'll, let's say this is ignition. We put ignition in the middle here and this will be in a later video, but we put it, yeah, go ahead, John. OPC UA is not edge-driven, too. You have to define the channel in OPC UA server. It's all server-side, server yep. So, um, yeah. Unless you, you, you can use their no, web it's... configuration tool, but you'd have to customly code that. Well, you'd still have to have another tool to do that, right? So the, the, the uh, API for Kepware. Now, what Kepware is doing is, in, and, and so in, in PTC's defense, a couple of years ago when I met with them and I heard about the PTC acquisition and I, I met with those guys in Portland, I was asking them, hey, what's the future of Kepware and all that kind of stuff. What they actually just announced this, they're moving Kepware to the edge. So what Kepware's plan is, is to move it all to the edge. So that's why they came out with their Linux-based system. So you can put it on really inexpensive edge devices, have it talk to these Allen Bradley and Siemens PLCs, which by the way, they have Allen Bradley and Siemens support. I think also Modbus TCP for that Linux-based Kepware package that just came out. We were part of, we were on that beta team. What their plan is to make OPC UA edge-driven, they're gonna literally put it on the edge. Now there are some PLCs that already have OPC servers built in. Do you know why it is that more PLCs don't have OPC servers built into them? That foundation cost. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's the cost of each of developing it in each unit, but also it's the overhead. OPC UA is incredibly resource intensive. Okay, and remember one of, one of our, third, our third requirement is it has to be lightweight. Now, OPC UA is stateful. It is not open, okay? It's, it isn't open, you gotta, you gotta be part of the club. It isn't report by exception, okay? It's pull response. The server does all the work. The server pulls out, gets a response. Let's say it doesn't get a response, it may auto demote, go to the next one, go to the next one, then visit the last one. It's all server driven. All the configuration gets done on this side. And remember, with IIoT, it's the idea that everything is edge driven. These will all report. So when we generally do a project like this, we will connect here with Kepware, use the IoT gateway, which talks MQTT, we use the IoT gateway and the OPC server that they have in their existing architecture becomes the report by exception node. This all becomes a big node in the system and we'll report by exception from the OPC server using Kepware's IoT gateway. And then our Raspberry Pi, our Wagyu, our EasyRack PLCs, Everything, uh, you know, um, Siemens Step, uh, Step 7, the 1200s now support MQTT. They all now publish into the namespace automatically report by exception. And then we can do the same thing. It, in most cases, our MES system is actually not separate. It actually lives inside of the ignition space. The ERP is generally always separate. Sometimes warehouse management is external or it's inside of ignition. But we're going to go over that kind of stuff in a, a future video. But the, the answer to the question, is OPC UA the future of IoT, is yes and no. It is yes in that you're not going to obliterate the existing OPC UA infrastructure that you have, but you also won't expand it. The no component is that you're not going to take this architecture and make it the foundation of your digitally transformed business. You won't do that because it, it's cost prohibitive, it is too resource intensive, and it is going to paint you into a corner when it comes to the real value of IoT, which is every time I add in a new, o, new node, I want my systems to become self-aware, right? When I add a new checking account in my, at my bank, I don't have to go to my banking software and manually add that checking account to my banking software. It shows up in my banking software just by virtue of its existence. Right? When I buy a new stock, I don't have to go to my brokerage account and manually add the stock to my account. It shows up because it exists in my brokerage account. Right? That is the internet of things. The industrial internet of things is when I add a new piece of machinery on my plant floor, it shows up simply because it exists. All right, any questions, put them down in the comments and that's it.